Well, hello there, you amazing, amazing, beautiful, wonderful people. You are looking absolutely amazing today, I must add. It's Saturday. This is video two of, I think, just two. Because it's the weekend, and I, I shouldn't really do more, should I? We'll see. We'll see what happens. First video, if you didn't see it, and you are following the Idaho 4 case, we spoke about the recent interview between Forensic Frenzy and Andrew Garrett of Garrett Discoveries, Inc., Go and watch it if you haven't seen that video. Um, but in this video, we are heading back over to Tenerife to just briefly discuss the thing that's being pushed out now um, and is gaining a little bit of momentum through the likes of Justin Morris again. And that is with respect of Jay Slater and whether Jay Slater had been, had been dumped. Yeah, that's right, dumped. Because what we do know in the Jay Slater case is that Jay Slater was found, apparently, down a ravine. We looked at that track, if you like, and we looked at, and it kind of looked like even the dog stopped. Remember that? Did you see that video? Where even when the dog was walking, the dog had the brains to anchor up and be like, I can't go no further. Um, they're trying to say that Jay Slater continued to walk because he didn't have the brain of a dog and couldn't see that if he continued walking, he would fucking shit cart off a ravine. Um, which the argument and has always been the argument here is would somebody do that if they were completely compass mentis? Because that's, that's, that's just it. If you want to believe the, the, the overarching narrative that's being pushed, that this was a tragic accident, you have to ask yourself whether this was a tragic accident that took place and that person was completely compass mentis, or was there a mitigating factor that meant that he was not thinking straight or he was not behaving in a manner that he would have otherwise been behaving. And had he have been behaving in a normal manner pointed out by Brad, because Brad had turned around. I said this the other day, if he'd have been thinking like me, he'd have returned to the road. So, and this is a guy of the same sort of age and we've always kind of tried to be fair We've tried to speak about how sort of young adults may not have, you know, be the same sort of mindset as a fully grown adult, even though you've got Nicola Bully, who apparently fell herself into a river with no mitigating factors involved. So what happens? Accidents do happen. But for the purpose of this video, we do have to talk about the theory of Jay Slater potentially being dumped there and does that actually hold weight whatsoever now what i will say is this and this is a fact there is nothing out there that is truly credible enough to be classed as a factual piece of representation or a factual representation that would support jay slater being dumped but and there is a massive but to this and that is that despite there being absolutely no factual evidence that would support Jay Slater being dumped, you absolutely 100% cannot rule it out. You cannot. And I'll tell you for why. Law enforcement had made up their mind about this case prior to finding Jay Slater. And they did that for one of two reasons. And that was either they had a preconceived notion that Jay Slater came to demise under his own volition. And that was how they were going to spin it regardless. This is a silly youth who'd been out to the NIG festival, been raving and thought he could walk back and succumb to a terrain that he was unfamiliar with. Because I feel that law enforcement felt that that was a plausible story. And it is a plausible story until you start digging into the weeds of the backstory and start understanding about some of the characters around this case that then starts making you raise your eyebrows somewhat. You do then start questioning because there are a lot of things you have to kind of ignore to make that truly fit without questions. Not saying it's impossible, but you do have to ignore a lot of things in order to make that plausible. But there is evidence that Jay Slater could have indeed been dumped and that is that we know that there was a search jay slate was found 20 minutes away from where his phone last pinged 
That's that's what we're saying. And we know that the area was accessible because Jay Slater accessed it. So at the end of the day, you can't say it was an inaccessible area. So how could we 100% rule out that somebody took Jay Slater to this area and disposed of him? How how can you 100% say that that is not possible? Now, they turn around and say that the injuries are consistent with a fall. So how can you again say that 100% he was not pushed or he was not thrown? You can't say that. You, there, was, there is no possible way of saying it. What The only way that you can absolutely turn around and say that Jay Slater was not pushed, he was not thrown, or something didn't happen to him previously, and he was held somewhere else and then taken there at a later time and then dumped, is you have to accept the overarching narrative that's being pushed and not question anything about it. That's that's it. You have to trust everybody, on, not just the people around him, you have to trust everybody on the entire island. That's what you have to do. And and we have to ignore the fact that this, this island, and I'm not trying to point the finger at the residents of Tenerife. I'm just saying that Tenerife is problematic when it comes to people going missing. Statistically, it's a fucking nightmare. They have several hundred people go missing a year. They have, just around the Jay Slater case, had multiple people who have either disappeared and been found, or strange little stories like the two children that were found in the car, abandoned, and you know the dad is apparently found, and then he's saying that he's nothing to do with them, and, and things like that. We spoke the other day about another lad who had gone missing. Like, on, on t there's there's a lot. There's a lot. Do your homework. There was even a a program that was like the the missing of Tenerife that we briefly touched on a while back. So look, they have issues with people going missing here. They have issues with narcotics, but you could argue doesn't everywhere. Is there anywhere that is completely free of those issues? Probably not. But this area is problematic. But we also have the fingerprint situation whereby Jay Slater was apparently um, had his identification confirmed via fingerprinting now there's such an argument you know this this no it can't be done yes it can be done and there are so many mitigating factors when it comes to the potential that that was done that we can't really argue it because the, the scales are like this do you know what i mean there's dependent on so many factors ranging from was he in direct sunlight what was the rate of decomposition what was the level of decomposition was there water that laid in the bottom of that ravine was a hand or something in water that was keeping it hydrated was it protected in any way shape or form it can be done i spoke about this briefly the other day it can be done they've even done it on mummified hands that are thousands of years old so it can be done but in this specific case do we know 100 percent that it was done we just don't we just don't we have to accept what the family want to do with this that's the absolute bottom line here if the family want to push this on and to find out any further information then hopefully they will have their chance to say we're not happy we feel that something else happened and someone will listen. If the family turn around and say, no, we are happy with what we've been told, then this will not go any further. And as it stands at the point of doing this video, there is no indication that this case is being investigated any further than what it is. I'm not saying it's not, I'm just telling you now, there is no indication whatsoever that this case has been indicated for, you know, investigated further. Certainly not in the UK. But the question of was Jay dumped in that area or was he pushed to his death, I feel that, and I'm going out on a limb and saying this is indeed factual, that currently they have not been able to prove that that is not a possibility. 
And in fact, the way that they behaved through investigation, one thing primarily making me decide this, that they turn around and say that people have no relevance to the investigation, and that is before Jay Slater is even found, that leads me to conclude that the investigation wasn't done well enough. What if Jay Slater had have been found with a gunshot, a stabbing, or head trauma and found on the side? Would the two people who are the last to see Jay Slater then had then been relevant? Ask yourself that question. And if not, why not? Why did they, why did law enforcement make the statement that these two individuals who had spent the, the you know, some of the last moments of Jay Slater's life, why were they deemed irrelevant before they'd even found him? I'll catch you all in the next one.